welcome to your horoscope for April 2020. We're Sagittarius. This month, not only do we have your ruling planet traveling with Pluto, but coming into conjunction with Pluto this month as well. That is all happening in your second house. It's a beautiful indicator, actually, of some financial strength that is available to you. But you may need to find that strength and that health and that wellness following the guidance of Venus here, who's going to move out of bounds. So we may have to do this month a bit untraditionally, and that is something that I think you can actually get on board with. Now, another thing I do want to bring your attention to this month, Sag, is the fact that you do still have Uranus, but also Venus traveling in this house. We're going to have the sun move up into your sixth house. As well, we've got Saturn and Mars who are traveling all month long in the energy of Aquarius, who is ruled by Uranian energy. So I do have a gentle hope for you that you will really pay attention to your health this month, more along the lines of not worrying about... Um, you know, existing ailments or anything necessarily shockingly coming up, but maybe making sure you have some good preventative strategies in place to make sure that not only your physical health, but your mental health and wellness are steady, they're streamed, and you've got them good to go, okay? All right, Sag, let's jump in and let's talk about everything that's happening this month on the cosmic weatherscape over here, okay? First and foremost, as we take a look, we can see that the majority of your planets are in the lower half of the chart, which is an indicator to us, Sag, that you're doing a lot of foundation building. You're doing a lot of building in what we call the night side of the chart. So you're building in the night, and then as things start to move this way and we move towards the upper part of the chart, the things that you've built at night will now be available for you to have access to during the day. So you're really building and creating something solid. So when you're looking at your chart and your horoscope, look at where your hemisphere breakdown is as well, because it is your best indicator of where to put your action. Where is the majority of your energy actually available to you? So right now it's in the building stages, okay? We see that um, Saturn and Mars are traveling together here in your third house all month long. Now Mars is action, movement, assertion, energy. There is boots to the ground. You are doing stuff. You are taking action in this particular area. Now with Mars here, you could be having conversation with your siblings, with your neighbors. Good news, if we're in quarantine, you may be talking to your neighbors, even if it's just by social media. Um, you could also be whispering across balconies to each other. Or maybe you are at a distance from the people that you normally talk to and you're having to text. This is also a good indicator with Saturn here that there may be new conversations conversation or new contracts, new communication via paperwork, documentation that's pretty serious. It's going to be solid. It's going to be grounded, but you could see it coming from this third house area. The other thing I think about in the third house is learning, which is something typically sad you're very into. So you could be learning, whether this be that you're actually taking on and getting ready to tackle for the next couple years a new subject, or you're going to teach something, or you're launching that website finally. There's this energy of sharing um, information and you're trying to absorb it. This could also be a new way of thinking. Saturn coming into the third house, you're going to get some new beliefs, some new thinking, something new that adds to how you communicate and effectively make decisions every day. So we will see Saturn and Mars over here all month long bringing a kind of serious edge to this particular area, but also being very good for getting any conversing done that needs to be done. We've also got, on the same day, Mercury and Neptune traveling together in a conjunction. Now, these two, together in a conjunction, they're phenomenal for creative things. This is in your fourth house, home, family, real estate, property. So there's very much so this spiritual attitude around things at home. There's forgiveness. There's some peace. Maybe even you're spending time in more meditation. I believe that this energy here as well as really, really good for forgiveness or decorating your house in a way that feels good to you, doing projects from home that maybe we don't see yet, but you're going to get ready to launch them out into some place that we can see them. Home is taking on a spiritualized energy here. And as long as you keep it in that focus, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Now, what you don't maybe want to do with that energy is what we're going to have is a fog. 
Mercury is in fall in the energy of Pisces. So this creates a little bit of a fog. So maybe what you don't want to be doing is signing those serious documents over here from your third house about your house, about a family member, about some be at home level decision because it's foggy and you maybe don't have all of the details and all of the information that you need available to you to make that big decision. So home could feel a little bit elusive at this time as well. Now on the third, we're going to see Venus move out of this energy of Taurus and step up here above the horizon line and move into your relationship house. Venus in the energy of Gemini. Now first and foremost, Venus likes to bring benefit where she goes, right? So the benefit she loves to bring is harmony. She magnetizes this area for value. And that could be value of self-esteem, your values, your morals, your, those kinds of things. She could also be valuing this particular area by bringing you money, by connecting you with different people in different relationships. In the energy of Gemini, which is your natural opposite energy, Venus is gonna start to work on the details details of relationship, the details of how this is valued. Venus also just likes to bring some good old fashioned romance to the table. Now we're in a little bit of a shutdown happening right here all over the world, but let me tell you what, this third house of communication is an Aquarius for you. It's socialized, we're doing things online, we're being social and valuing each other in a different way. There is no reason that a very significant relationship, whether it's romantic, partnership, um, friendship, no reason any of those things could not be coming into play as well. Now, one other thought about this relationship house for you, Sag, is because we do have Saturn down here in this third house, Gemini is a natural ruler of that third house. You may be having a whole bunch of self-esteem come to your table. The relationship that you have with you, your thinking, your beliefs, even a season or a cycle of life that you are starting to outgrow. And as Saturn is here in the third house, you're getting this sneak peek of where your mind where your communication is going next in this next two years. And Venus is here to help that transition and make it absolutely beautiful. On the fourth, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto. Jupiter, your ruling planet. Pluto being the ruler of your 12th house, right? These two are going to come together in a conjunction here. Now, where they're having their conjunction is actually in your second house. So what Jupiter and Pluto are about is, first of all, make sure you watch the Jupiter-Pluto video that I put out so you can understand all three parts of the conjunction that's going to be happening this year. It hasn't happened in 13 years. So what you can think back to and what you can know about this conjunction is, as these two come together, you are driven you are ready to evolve, you are ready to expand, but you are ready to do it in a way that builds you something solid and sturdy for the long term, right? That's what these two energies are trying to do here. Now, Jupiter being your ruling planet, it also tells me you are involved in your money in some way. You are involved in something of value in some way, and we can see you doing this thing. We can see you going to this thing. We start to see you show up as this thing. Now, Pluto being the ruler of Scorpio in your 12th house, this also tells me that something that is happening here for you is you have a strong sense of financial intuition this month if you will tap into it. Now, remember I told you on the third that Venus came into the energy of Gemini, but she also moved into a direction that we call out of bounds, which means that in your relationships, in the relationships that you have in your life, in significant relationships that will come into your world, they may be outside of your normal circle. They may be outside of your normal realm of thinking. But if your mind is changing, if you're gaining new information, we're in a brand new cycle in the world. As you gain your information, you can use financial intuition this month, Sag, to help yourself. What are you learning? What are you feeling led to? What are you feeling led to around your own values as you move out of your normal circles to gather information that will help take you forward? Now, whatever you create with this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction here is brilliant, first of all, because it is a supercharged amount of energy. But both of these planets at this particular conjunction are forward. They are not in retrograde. So whatever you're starting is your leap forward. This is absolutely to your benefit. Don't get caught up 
in the transiting south node behavior that wants to keep you in the past, Sag, it is time to nurture yourself forward. It is time to nurture those finances. It is time to nurture new movement, new actions, and new people who can show you how to nurture your trauma, your fear, your healing, your creativity, all of those things that have to do very intimately with this north, north node in the eighth house, okay? On the 7th, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy of Libra. This full moon is going to light up your 11th house. Now, a full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or an adjustment needs to be made here in some way, shape, or form. This moon at 18 degrees of Libra is also asking you, Sag, to look at your balance, right? What's your balance between you and your friends, you and the people that you're showing up for? Are you giving too much? Are they taking too much? Are you taking too much and they're not giving enough? Are you showing up as a friend? Are you really showing up? This moon is going to give you some clues as to what that looks like. The other thing that I keep getting and I keep seeing, and I'm not sure who you are, I'm not sure who this one's for, but in the 11th house, it looks like this moon, somewhat a friend in your world or maybe someone in an organization. It's anything social for sure, but this looks like a friend maybe, Sag, and they are in a little bit of a time of crisis and they need your help. Or there's something where a friendship group or an organization needs your help in order to get the job done. The other thing this would open the door for with these energies coming over here towards your sixth house, seriousness happening in your third house, is despite the fact that we have a, qu a quarantine going on, and despite the fact that we've got kind of this world shutdown situation, this would actually open the door for some kind of work or some kind of advancement or project that could begin, and it would likely begin digitally as well. So keep that in mind, okay? On the ninth, we see Venus, who's over here, in um, Gemini, but on the 9th, Venus is going to move into the pre-retrograde shadow time, which means she's going to begin to slow down, right, so that she can get ready to take that retrograde from May 13th until June 25th. So here, in your 7th house, in relationships, if you're starting to feel like you're putting yourself out there, but the relationships as of the 9th start to come in a little bit more slowly, or things are growing and developing more slowly, the money's coming more slowly from these relationships. That's because Venus is beginning that slowdown. So as the slowdown happens, as of the 9th moving all the way to May 13th, take note what is becoming in your, in your front view mirror here where you're looking at it. It's in your face. You're having to make decisions about it. You're having to think of it, maybe even something from the past. This is what Venus is going to walk you through to review the value of, whether it be an actual relationship or it be your relation to certain things in your life, that's what you're gonna look at during that retrograde. So keep an eye on what you're starting to be shown at that particular time. Venus is also a financial planet, so trust your intuition. Where do your finances need an adjustment or where is there an opportunity for you even in the current um, world cycle of the market, where is your opportunity to step in and use that financial intuition and your new relationships to benefit yourself? On the 11th, we see Mercury moving out of the energy over there of Pisces and moving into the energy of Aries. So this is going to light up your fifth house space. The sun and Mercury together is brilliant. It's beautiful for communication. You are driven. There is clarity happening here. I think Mercury is just so excited to be out of Pisces so he can like think straight and take a deep breath. So here in the fifth house, you could certainly th see things happening for children. In your life, um, you know, if you've been a teacher in some way, shape, or form, maybe you're having to find your students in a different way, or you're having to connect with your students in a different way. Just children in your home maybe doing online schooling. Something like that could definitely be on the surface here, but it makes you busy. This certainly impacts your life because this will demand a fair amount of your attention to detail, which Mercury is perfectly at ease to do here. Now, what Mercury can also do in the energy of Aries is, is your, you say it, but you say it very quickly. You say it and you're speaking like a warrior. So maybe just kind of keep that in mind with the fifth house. The other thing I think of with Mercury moving here into Aries, into this fifth house space, which is children, joy, play, 
self-expression. Maybe you're taking a risk on something. Conception. Of course, it could be conception of a baby or conception of a project, right? Something like that. When the sun and Mercury are together, you're getting all of the details. There's clarity. There's motivation happening here. The sun will begin to move into this sixth house just uh, on the 19th. So this could absolutely be the beginning of a new project happening for you, which may have come from a friendly online source in some way, shape, or form. So the sun does move over into Taurus on the 19th. Then we're going to have a new moon also happen on the 22nd. This new moon is going to be at three degrees of Taurus, so make sure you identify that on your chart. With the sun beaming in Taurus, this again brings our attention back to not only your daily routines, but also your health, Sag right? So health. Let's talk about health for a minute. This is not just the physical health of your body. Yes, that is important. What is your routine looking like? Sad, you are ruled by the thighs. Are you taking care of your legs and your lower body? Are you making sure you're walking? You're getting enough movement. You're a fire energy. Even in quarantine time, you've got to make sure you're moving enough so that the fire doesn't burn you out. Instead, it can continue to burn you hot, right? Burn you active. Burn you with the, um, the fire of knowledge, which is what you have, right? But at this new moon, other ideas of health that we can bring here are, do you feel like your daily routine is healthy? Do you feel like you have healthy thinking? Saturn has stepped down into your third house. You are, you are rethinking some things. You got some things on your mind. You've got some details on your mind. So this is the health of thinking, of living, of what you're eating. Are you being of service to other people? Sad, you just shine when you show up and you help other people, right? And what do you want in the sixth house? Because this is also a place of work, co-workers, freelance things. Are you wanting to take on a project that's more freelance? If that's the case, the sun is motivated here. This new moon says, let's plant these seeds of intention for what we can bring here. It doesn't have to be something brand new. It can just bring something we're bringing new perspective, new light to the table with because this is going to be your movement forward and Taurus energy wants to bring you something steady and solid and likely it is something that you began when we had our last Aries moon so think about that think about where you're at in the evolution of your projects that you've had in that area as well okay on the 25th, Pluto is going to step into retrograde. Now, Pluto is going to go retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn. It'll come out of retrograde in October at 22 degrees of Capricorn. I'll be making a separate video about Pluto retrograde specifically so that we can really get into it. But what we need to know here is that with Pluto going retrograde, what's going to happen is now that financial intuition that you had maybe will slow down a little bit or it will take you on the journey backwards. It'll say, okay, Sag, here's where we need to die off so that we can live in a different way, right? This Pluto retrograde is about you looking at what needs to transform in this area so that this area can evolve. Now, your helper is that it's coming from a very intuitive space. Trust your intuitions. Trust your dreams. Trust your visions over this next handful of months because they are literally taking you on the pathway forward. I will tell you, too, that typically during a Pluto retrograde, if it is in the second house, watch your money. Be mindful of it and don't create new debt to the very best of your ability if it can be avoided, okay? As we close out this month, Mercury is going to hit the road. Mercury is going to move up here into the energy of Taurus with everybody else, everybody and their sister. So the sixth house is very busy, daily phone calls. Um, maybe you're, you're having uh, a time trying to figure out your new daily routine and what that looks like. Mercury is going to be here until May 11th, but expect to be having a fair amount of conversation. Now that conversation will be slower. Mercury has moved into the energy of Taurus, who's not in a rush to do pretty much anything, but what you're going to get done with Mercury here, the work, the decision making you're going to make is going to be solid and it's going to be good, high, dependable quality. So enjoy this Mercury and Taurus. Now, here's the other vision I'm getting. Mercury and Taurus for you, Sag, this month, this could be a romance. This could be somebody... Um, even if it's the romance of a project, you're getting to talk about it on a day-to-day -day basis, and this is making you light up. This is making you smile. This is making you happy. Of course, we've still got Saturn down here in the third house. This could be something very serious you're in talks about with this particular energy moved up here into Taurus. If you did need to have a very serious conversation with a health professional or make any kind of decisions for health procedures, um, a really good time to do that would be uh, after the 22nd of the month as well. So 
it's going to be a good month, Sag, and it's definitely going to be a month where I think if you trust your intuition and you are willing to go out of your normal realm and your normal bounds, you can really do a little something something this month to keep things rolling in a forward direction, even if the world is kind of in its new cycle. Nothing's going to be the same when we start to move and get business going again. So put yourself in the best position for success as we get ready to come out to the other side. Certainly, you want to get yourself set up here before we get into the retrogrades of May, okay? All right, Sag, I love you so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, Sagis.